You all must know her. You can touch her, but not too long because you don't want to zap her energy and her power and all that, right? So careful with that. But um, she shared some words with me um, that I can say changed my life. And um, sometimes you never know when you have a conversation with someone, you never know when you share a moment with someone how that person will impact you. And um, sometimes they don't even know it. But Jessica, I wanna say thank you so much for sharing those words with me. Um, and I look forward to continuing on the journey. And I hope you all, when you hear her words and she will also talk about the, what she's doing and you will understand a little bit more about um, what I'm talking about. <laughs> but um, um, I, I look forward to this life journey with you and learning and growing um, as, as a powerful woman and as a powerful spirit being. So um, Jessica, with honor, please come to the Velvet Note stage. I want my mouth to speak nothing but praise when speaking of you my beautiful black messiah. I want to be the key to the rusty cage that imprisons black love. Use me. I want to love you as I love my own hands with necessity, with appreciation, with respect. Share fantasies and dreams. Make plans to follow through verbally arrest you before working the kinks back into our hair. Lay down and cool in our sweat. I want to be the chant in your railroad song and go the distance of the track with you like the Panthers insist, like Montgomery bus strikers persist in the taking of our destiny into our own hands. I want. I want to be the revolution in your black fist. I, I want to be the revolution in your black fist. Yeah. I'm Jessica Halter. I bring you greetings from Oakland. California. Uh -oh. um, I live, uh -huh. I live yeah. in Georgia now. I call it home. Um, for those of you who are familiar with my work through the Punani Poets, hello. Um, for those of you who don't know anything about me, let's take this ride, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ready, ride? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did bring a few books. I don't often carry books with me, but I have um, Speak the Unspeakable. Um, I'll be 50 in November. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, November 11th. So, to say I have a lot of work is an understatement. This is my book, uh, which will be Pussy Willow. It's 500 pages. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? But it'll be the first book that I've done that doesn't have pictures in it in a long time. So, when I saw. Chanel, your book and how you had the photos in there. I'm like, oh my God, me too. <laughs> Saturday mornings. Those Saturday mornings, I pushed my bed away from the wall, hoping my sister would not hear, hoping my foster mama would not hear, hoping the old wood would not squeak or crackle too loud and tell of my desire, tell of my weakness, tell of a little girl's dream to see her mother, tell of a black girl's longing for white arms to be intertwined with black ones, tell of my brown eyes need to see hazel Irish ones, tell of the truth of how I could love you, mother, still need you, mother, even after the giveaway, the living away, the way irony played in your manic rage on a Berkeley street the day you said you needed to find her, my sister, she, not me, offering in my palm my whole black heart, but she, the daughter you never saw, but needed no less. The words still echo in my head, replay each day 
who wants this little girl? Who wants this little girl? Wrist burns under drunken grit. The trick my sister said is to stand the pain. Twisting my wrist skin in a game of Indian chief. When you can't stand no more, you lose. So you gotta howl like an Indian cause you lost. Child games flashing in my mind, but there is no time to be a child again and anymore. But maybe not forever. And there is no howl escaping my lips, only the train screaming for me. And I want to be on that caboose and go away. A lone pantheress like the poster fuzzy beneath my finger on basement wall at foster home opens black bosom to me. I'll take her. I'll take your little girl. No howl escapes my lips. The fire of your red hair burns my eyes as you slip into a sea of people and traffic and your battle dress jacket slips into the loud stares of onlookers. The train howls our pain, Saturday mornings. I loved the loving to see you, mother. Cried dry tears when you did not show. Pushed my bed back to the window, my sister and I played Indian chief until pain was only a game and I could be a child again. This one is called Cancer of Love. Fuck your blue suit. <laughs> I thought you had changed. You have not. I had only met your representative. He was the hard-working entrepreneur with the John Henry hammer in his hand. I wish I had more notice that you were coming and he was going. I wasn't really prepared for a visit with internal affairs. But there I was, watching you with hands that had built homes, tear fathers from their families, turning mistakes into convictions to fill the halls of prisons. I wanted to make a husband, a father, a better lover of you, but you had to go and get in that blue suit. I should have been grateful to have a man who wasn't going to jail, some may say, but I felt like a traitor being married to a black man who put other black men away and destroy black children at their root. So, I had a thought about you just the other day. Fuck your blue suit. Oh. <laughs> Y'all wanna hear some Punani? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll go down for that. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna do the very, very first erotic poem that I ever wrote. I won't lie, don't lie. I give good head and my truth be naked but protected like the sensual elixir that fills your love glove. As I exercise my skills, blessing you with seductive thrills as the pink rose petal lips of my cafe ole with extra cream skin whisper wetness and repeat rhythm. Repeat rhythms to your monumental extension. My hands 
also know their craft they play your skin flute with the careful expert skill of finely tuned instrument deserves and this doctor's tongue like a satin coated honing device probes beyond your proud outward gesture to that hidden underneath place. I won't lie, I don't lie, I could suck a golf ball through a uh, garden hose. <laughs> what can Punani do for you? We can take one ball like that. We can take one ball like that. You just get warmed up. That's all. Come on, come on, come on. Girl, no, it's, it's you know, way too, it's way too, no, it's, it's too rough on the dudes in here. Really? Yeah. All right, girl, we strapping on, we tap, we... Oh, No, wait. Have you heard it before? No, I haven't heard that. She, I don't think she has that book with her. Yeah, she don't. It's in the... I have everything in this book, though. This is like my Bible. It's in verbal... It's my You saw the title? Penetration. It's gonna be called Pussy Whitlow when I'm done. Okay, but I think you guys will like this one. It's new. I hope you like it. It's called Baby, Please Keep Your Eyes on the Road. <laughs> <laughs> I love these long drives. Watching nature do what it does. Feeling the electromagnetic energy between us crowd and confuse us mile after mile. The erotic heat of the South keeps me wet and thirsty. I offer you a cool, juicy plum from a cooler I packed with fruit and water. With your eyes still on the road, you bite into it, nipping my finger just a little bit. I lick the plum juice running down my arm and suck my fingertip where you bit it just a little bit. Now I'm feeling sticky. I decide to take a horse bath, reaching for spring water, giving you a swig before disrobing my shoulders. The water is only cold for an instant as I pour it about my neck and breasts. My sundress sticks to my nipples, arousing them and making me smile. With wipes from the glove box, I begin to bathe my face my neck, my arms, my hands. With more water and a wet one, I wash my belly, my thighs, my pussy, my ass. Moments after my whore bath is packed away, you are still watching me with all of your energy. Baby, please keep your eyes on the road as I rub shea butter and argon oil into my skin. I moisturize my hands, my arms, my neck, my breasts, my thighs, pussy, lips. My butters are scented with an erotic blend of India's richest essential oils, and it is infectious, taking over the space between us hanging on the heat making you too hard to drive. I can feel my daddy's old yellow Corvette steady herself under your nervous hands. Adjusting the volume on the radio, I reach for your hand, firmly holding it, so you will know this is not one of my passive, non-committal gestures for peacekeeping. I swipe my index finger down the center of your palm, but I do not giggle like a schoolgirl. 
because this is serious. Pull over, I command, as I guide your hand to me, pulling it out of my skirt and inside of me. The Alabama heat pales in comparison to the sweltering wantonness of my pussy as it devours your hand. You look around to see if anyone's looking and pull deep into the bush. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. This will be the last one. You want to know why I fuck, old oh man? Why your welfare check should be my seed? My children are the spoils of the war you wage against my lovers as they run through my front door. Stop. Fuck, long, hard, strong, sweetly, goodly, godly. <sighs> you ever been fucked by a black man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's something indeed, Daddy Sam. Way off in the middle of the gun-ridden night where silence is imaginary and freedom is a joke. That old slave come running to my door, broken, weary, worn, flesh torn, unhealed. His body collapses as my arms fold round him. His mind still races, running, seeking soft, wet places to wash away his pain. You ever hold a black man? Yeah. It's something to feel, Daddy Sam. Oh, but my ghetto tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword. My head rolls, my eyes, they flash and they bat my arms, fold like a shield across my breast, protecting the heart, which has never known the freedom to care, to truly care for this black man, the one who is dead, yet alive. But something deep inside of me, deeper than the pain, deeper than the grief, deeper than our struggle, bubbles up, threatening to overflow me like a, a volcanic eruption when I see into his bloodshot eyes. You ever look into the eyes of black men they will consume you, Daddy Sam. All at once I submit to some ancient desire to be a woman and to run free and dance on the shores of a homeland I have never known. Tantalizing this man while he watches the thrusts and gyrations of my temple, a feast for kings lay before him, breaking bread, devouring fruits, juice drips from his lips, tantalizing, inviting, promising me. He sits on a sandy beach land, neither he nor I have ever known, yet it thrives in my mind. In my mind, he has worked all day on land that is his and has earned a right to this feast and to feast on this my dancing sanctuary. My carnal desire washes over him waves from this vast ocean called a black woman's soul. You ever connect with the soul of a black man? That's my, my proof of heaven, Daddy Sam. Oh, I, I give to him what I have to offer and Watch him eat as I rub his feet. They soak in a pail of water and suds. I stand before him and unleash my robe aggressively, deliberately. The way I feel tonight, down on my knees, I grab a, a foot from the pail. His toes trail water from my lips down my neck to my rising cinnamon nipples tracing the 
pattern of his seal emblazoned on my belly the scar she says of a real woman I laugh cause his words tickle and I, I jump as his toes play in my shrine of generation you, you ever seen the relaxation of a black man I swear it's a rare occasion Daddy Sam. So I give it to him like fire and ice, no doubt. He does not have to guess his dick talks to me. And I know his pleasure. I have scaled the pain walls of time to be in this place, in this moment, facing this black man's desire to be inside of me. I am hot. I am throbbing, I am wet, I am ready. I thirst to feed, I give to drink from the rivers that flow beneath my surface. I, I am the earth's crust. He, he is a majestic mahogany tree trunk whose frilly branches and leaves have fallen off in stormy weather, yet his roots remain firmly embedded in me. Oh, I, I bathe in the light of his strength and I marvel at the thickness of him as he burst through me, forging for the heat of my pulsating core. You ever, you ever connect with the soul of a black man? It may seem crude to speak of loving as a fuck, but then making love, real love, it extends from the kitchen to the boardroom. It is an unyielding need to keep your family fed, brothers. Keep a, a roof over their heads. Just as my babies grow inside of me, the provider grows inside of a man and that soil that he's planted in, sisters, it, it must be the fertile soil. How can the black man promise passionate retreat from these cruel, cruel ghetto streets while gazing into our eyes, kissing our lips and caressing our skin and eat of our bodies when they cannot feed our children. Lord, I had good loving, not wholesome loving, not purified loving since before that rocky ride on the rippled waters of the Atlantic. You ever recall the voyage of the black man? He, he is reminded every day, Daddy Sam, he is reminded at work. He is reminded while making love to his woman. He is reminded while looking into the hungry mouths of his children. But the one place this brother should never be reminded of his shackles my sisters is right here, right here, right here, at home. Thank you so much. Hey, I knew that thing was falling. Look. <laughs> I gotta use this as a fan. Oh, oh, that was like. <laughs> talking about pussy just for the sake of talking about pussy. Punani Poets is an AIDS awareness project. It is imperative that um, we, you know, I mean, I've been doing this since 1995. Um, so it's imperative that we have open, honest dialogue about sex. And y'all probably 
are too young to remember what life was like um, before AIDS and before erotic spoken word, but yeah, I did that. <laughs> like before Punani poets, there was no erotic poetry. But, and even though it seems like, oh, you know, people were like, oh, this is like horrible. How could you turn poetry into like this <laughs> or whatever? I just thought we should start talking about sex. Like be open and honest about sex. So the book, though it does like blur the lines of sexual identity, I thought it was important because a lot of us think of anal sex as a gay act when it is not a gay act necessarily. Um, there is a prostate gland in the man's uh, backside and it needs stimulation and it is the combination of uh, the prison system, the drugs being you know pushed into our communities that created the download that brought HIV to women, to black women. So it is an imperative conversation. And I did not want to try to have it and not address the real issue that inside your ass, fellas, there is a prostate gland. It is like, ladies, it is like they have a click in their ass, if you can imagine. <laughs> so if you're having sex with them and you're not doing anything to stimulate it and they've already um, discovered it, maybe accidentally through prison rape or something. Um, yeah, it's very real. But uh, in Georgia, you know, <laughs> HIV numbers are crazy. And that's right. only because you, you, you fucking, but you don't want to talk about fucking, but you fucking. Yeah, but because right. you're not talking about it, you're not talking about the real things that, that we need to talk about. So that's why. I, I'm a little in your face with it or whatever, and that's that's what that book is about. So this book, um, when it comes out in February, uh, will probably be available at Amazon. But that first book, um, Verbal Penetration, and what you're talking about is the Punani experience, the war between tops and bottoms. It's a novel. It is available at Amazon. Um, it is published by Simon & Schuster. You can get it at um, Simon Says. Com. Thank you guys so much. I'm Jessica Holter. Right? Is there, is there an audio version of that book? Did you read? I have audio versions of everything.